Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 9. Dex Carvey, a life of passion and creativity cut short. Dex Carvey, the son of renowned Wayne's World star Dana Carvey, has tragically passed away at the age of 32 due to an accidental overdose. The news of his untimely death, announced by his father, has left the family, friends and fans mourning a life full of talent and potential. Born into a family immersed in creativity and performance, Dex inherited a diverse array of talents, including music, art, filmmaking and comedy. He pursued each of these with passion and commitment, showcasing his multifaceted abilities and vibrant personality. His collaborations with his father, including several TV series, were a testament to their close bond and shared love for the arts. Dex's loss is profoundly felt by his parents, Dana Carvey and Paula Zwegerman, and his younger brother Thomas, aged 30. In the words of his father, Dex loved life, and his enthusiasm and joy were contagious to those around him. His ability to uplift and inspire others was a defining aspect of his character. While his life was cut short, Dex's impact on those who knew him was significant. His passion for various artistic endeavors and his pursuit of them with wholehearted dedication left an indelible mark on the lives he touched. The Carvey family's statement reflects not only the depth of their loss, but also the celebration of Dex's life and his numerous contributions to the world of arts and entertainment. His memory will be cherished and his talents remembered. Tribute to Dex Carvey. Number 8. George Brown, the rhythmic heartbeat of Cool and the Gang. George Brown, a co-founder and the dynamic drummer of the iconic funk and disco band Cool and the Gang, passed away from lung cancer in Los Angeles at the age of 74. His death, announced by a representative from the band's record company, marks the loss of a musical innovator whose beats and co-written songs became the soundtrack of generations. Joining forces with seven other musicians in Jersey City, New Jersey in 1964, Brown was instrumental in shaping Cool and the Gang's distinctive sound. The group's hard work and perseverance paid off with their breakout hit Jungle Boogie in 1973, propelling them into the limelight. Over the next 12 years, Cool and the Gang enjoyed immense success, with 25 Billboard R&B Top 10 hits and a seamless transition from funk to disco to quiet storm. Brown's remarkable drumming skills earned him the nickname Funky, and his rhythms became the foundation for many of the band's most beloved songs, including Celebration, Ladies' Night, and Jungle Boogie. His influence extended beyond the band with his beats being sampled by numerous hip-hop and pop artists, cementing his status as a major influence in the music industry. Cool and the gang's music transcended the recording studio, frequently appearing on film and television soundtracks, notably in Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction with Jungle Boogie, and continued to be radio staples well into the 2020. Their contribution to music was recognized with two Grammy Awards and an induction into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2018. George Brown's legacy as a founding member of Cool and the Gang will live on through the timeless music he helped create, a celebration of rhythm and joy that continues to resonate across the world. Tribute to George Brown. Number 7. Tim Woodward, a distinguished actor with a rich legacy in television and film. Tim Woodward, an English actor renowned for his captivating performances in television and film, passed away from cancer on November 9th at the age of 70. Born in Kensington, London, into a family of actors, Woodward leaves behind a legacy of memorable roles that showcased his versatile talent. Born on April 24, 1953, to actors Edward Woodward and Venetia Collette, 
Woodward grew up in a household steeped in the performing arts. He followed in his family's footsteps, alongside his siblings Peter and Sarah, both actors. Woodward was educated at Haleybury and Imperial Service College and trained at the prestigious Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. Woodward's career was marked by a range of notable performances. He was best known for his audio narration in the children's television show Wide Eye and his role as Sergeant Alan Farmer in the 1970s BBC drama Wings. His portrayal of squadron leader Rex in Piece of Cake further demonstrated his acting prowess. Woodward's appearances in popular TV series such as Heartbeat, Murder City, and He Kills Coppers were highly acclaimed. In addition to his television work, Woodward had a cameo in William Mager's short film Stiletto and appeared in numerous other series, including The Equalizer, where he shared the screen with his father, Edward. His diverse roles in shows like The Irish RM, Absolutely Fabulous, and Agatha Christie's Poirot further highlight his range as an actor. Tim Woodward's death leaves a void in the world of acting. His contributions to television and film, his distinctive talent, and his ability to bring characters to life will be remembered and cherished. Tribute to Tim Woodward. Number 6. Charlie Dominici, a distinguished voice in progressive metal. Charlie Dominici, best known as the second vocalist for the iconic progressive metal band Dream Theater, passed away on November 17th at the age of 72. His journey in music, marked by his unique vocal talent and contributions to the genre, leaves a lasting legacy in the world of progressive metal. Born in Brooklyn, New York, Dominici moved to Nassau County, Long Island during his childhood. He first gained professional recognition as a member of Franca and the Knockouts, showcasing his skills in guitar and backing vocals. His big break came in 1987 when he successfully auditioned for Dream Theater, then known as Majesty, and joined the band in November of that year. Dominici's time with Dream Theater was highlighted by his performance on the band's debut album, 1989's When Dream and Day Unite. However, creative and personal differences led to his departure from the band as his pop vocal style diverged from the progressive direction the band was taking. Despite this, he maintained a cordial relationship with the band members throughout their careers. After a hiatus from the music industry, Dominici rediscovered his passion for music. This resurgence was sparked by his participation in Dream Theater's 15th anniversary performance in 2004, where he joined them on stage for the first time in 15 years. Inspired by this experience, he embarked on a solo career, releasing a three-album concept piece, O3, a trilogy, between 2005 and 2008. Dominici's influence extended beyond his albums, as he also opened for Dream Theater during their Chaos in Motion tour in 2007. His role in shaping the sound and style of Dream Theater and his later solo work contribute to his enduring legacy in progressive metal, Charlie Dominici's life and career in music were characterized by his distinctive vocal talent and his contributions to a genre he helped define. Tribute to Charlie Dominici. Number 5. As Bayat, a literary luminary and storyteller extraordinaire, Dame Antonia Susan Duffy, widely known by her pen name as Bayat, an acclaimed author and critic celebrated for her intricate and thought-provoking novels, passed away peacefully at her home at the age of 87. Her publisher Chato and Amp Windus confirmed her passing, leaving the literary world to mourn the loss of a brilliant mind whose work spanned six decades. Byatt's novels, particularly the Booker Prize-winning Possession and the insightful The Children's Book, are testaments to her ability to weave complex narratives that explore family, myth, and the art of storytelling. Her literary prowess earned her numerous accolades, including a Chevalier of France's Order of Arts and Letters, and she was recognized as a leading voice in contemporary literature. Born in 1936 in Sheffield and raised in York, 
Byatt's early life set the stage for her illustrious career. After studying English at Cambridge Bryn Mawr College in Philadelphia and Oxford, she began teaching at University College London in 1962. Her first novel, Shadows of a Sun, published in 1964, revealed her deep interest in exploring intricate family dynamics. Byatt's quartet of novels following the life of Frederica Potter exemplified her skill in chronicling the evolving female experience in the 20th century. From the virgin in the garden to a whistling woman, she masterfully blended historical context with rich character development. Possession, a novel that juxtaposes two academics' love story with the mystery of Victorian poets, not only won the Booker Prize but also captivated a global audience, exemplifying Byatt's talent for crafting compelling narratives. Byatt's passion for creating was evident in all her works. She once said, It's the most important thing in my life, making things. This passion extended to Peacock and Amp Vine, an illustrated essay, and countless other works that revealed her fascination with creativity and transformation. Her impact on literature was also recognized in the world of science, with a species of beetle named in her honor, inspired by her portrayal of naturalists in Morpho Eugenia. As Byatt's legacy as a storyteller, intellectual, and creator of intricate worlds in her novels will continue to inspire readers and writers alike for generations to come. Tribute to Ask Byatt. Number 4. Bobby Ussery, a distinguished jockey with a Hall of Fame legacy. Bobby Ussery, an American thoroughbred horse racing Hall of Fame jockey, passed away on November 16th at the age of 88. His illustrious career, marked by significant victories and innovative tactics, leaves a lasting imprint on the world of horse racing. Ussery's journey as a professional jockey began triumphantly at the Fairgrounds Race Course in New Orleans on November 22, 1951, where he won the Thanksgiving handicap aboard Reticule. This victory was the start of a remarkable decade for Ussery, during which he clinched wins in the Travers, Whitney, and Alabama Stakes. One of his most notable achievements came in 1959 with Winfield's Farms Colt New Providence, winning Canada's prestigious Queen's Plate. New Providence went on to win the Canadian Triple Crown, highlighting Ussery's skill as a jockey. His success continued with notable finishes in major races, including his best finish in the Belmont Stakes in 1959 aboard Baghdad, and a series of significant wins in 1960 with horses like Hail to Reason and Bally Ake. Upon retiring in 1974, Ussery had accumulated 3,611 race wins, a testament to his skill and dedication to the sport. His contributions to horse racing were recognized with his induction into the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame in 1980 and the Oklahoma Horse Racing Hall of Fame in 2011. Bobby Ussery's life and career in horse racing were characterized by his exceptional talent, innovative techniques, and numerous victories that made him one of the sport's most revered jockeys. Tribute to Bobby Ussery Number 3. Sarah Louise Keyes Evans, a courageous pioneer in civil rights. Sarah Louise Keyes Evans, an African-American Army veteran and a seminal figure in the civil rights movement, passed away on November 16 at the age of 95. Born in 1928 in Washington, North Carolina, her courageous stand against racial segregation marked a pivotal moment in the fight for civil rights in the United States. Keyes enlisted in the Women's Army Corps in 1951, and was stationed at Fort Dix in New Jersey. Her most notable act of resistance occurred on August 1, 1952, when she was traveling from Fort Dix to North Carolina. During the journey, Keyes courageously refused to give up her seat to a white Marine, leading to her arrest in a 13-hour detention in a Roanoke Rapids jail cell. This incident resulted in the landmark civil rights case Keyes v. Carolina Coach Company Keyes, was represented by attorney Dovey Johnson Roundtree, 
and the case was resolved in her favor in 1955 by the Interstate Commerce Commission, a significant victory for the civil rights movement. This ruling came the same year Rosa Parks was arrested for a similar act of defiance, showing the broader context of resistance against racial segregation. Key's personal life saw her marrying George Evans in 1958. She was a devout member of Our Lady of Victory Catholic Church in Brooklyn, New York. Despite her efforts to keep her case a secret, her story and photo eventually reached the public, bringing her the recognition she deserved. Her legacy was honored through various tributes, including the declaration of Sarah Keys Evans Day on August 1st in Roanoke Rapids and a dedicated mural depicting her story. The U.S. Army recognized her contributions with a video in 2020, and the 117th United States Congress considered awarding her the Congressional Gold Medal. Sarah Louise Keyes Evans' bravery and resilience continue to inspire and remind us of the importance of standing up for justice and equality. Tribute to Sarah Louise Keyes Evans. Number 2. Ken Adamson, a pioneering force in Denver. Broncos history. Ken Adamson, an esteemed member of the inaugural Denver Broncos team and a celebrated offensive lineman, passed away peacefully at his home in California at the age of 85. His passing marks the end of an era for the Denver Broncos in the American Football League, where he played a pivotal role in the early days of the franchise. Adamson's journey in professional football began after a successful college career at Notre Dame. He joined the Denver Broncos in 1960, contributing significantly to the team's formation and initial success. Starting all 14 games in the 1960 season, Adamson's prowess on the field was evident from the very beginning. He continued to be a mainstay in the lineup for the following two seasons, showcasing his skills and dedication to the team. His performance peaked in 1961, when he earned all AFL honors from the Associated Press, a testament to his talent and hard work. Adamson was part of the offensive line that supported running back Gene Mingo, a two-time AFL All-Star and a member of the Broncos' Ring of Fame. His contributions helped shape the early years of the Broncos, including their notable victory in the first game of the American Football League's history against the then Boston Patriots. Adamson's legacy is carried on by his beloved family, including his wife, Joyce Adamson, brother David Adamson, daughters Kelly, Shan, and Colleen, sons-in-law Matt and Charlie, and five grandchildren, Sean, Kenny, Claire, Elizabeth, and Emily. Ken Adamson's impact on the Denver Broncos and professional football will be remembered fondly. His role in the early success and development of the Broncos franchise has cemented his place in AFL and NFL history. Tribute to Ken Adamson. Today's top headlines. News 1. Former Oklahoma State Representative Lundy Kiger tragically passed away on Monday due to injuries sustained in a collision last Friday. The accident occurred on U.S. Highway 59 near Merriman Lane in the vicinity of Poteau. At the age of 69, Kiger was operating a tractor northbound on the highway when his vehicle was struck from behind by a Chevy Silverado, driven by 35-year-old Denver DeHart of Heavener. The impact caused Kiger's tractor to overturn, resulting in him being ejected from the vehicle. Emergency services airlifted Kiger to St. John's Hospital in Tulsa, where he succumbed to his critical injuries. DeHart did not sustain any injuries in the collision. The Poteau Police Department is actively investigating this incident. Kiger notably served as an Oklahoma State Representative from 2018 to 2020. His passing is mourned by the community who remember his contributions and service to the state. Gregory Woolley, a prominent figure in organized crime, was fatally shot in a parking lot in Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu, Quebec. The incident occurred around 10.30 a.m., with Woolley's wife and child reportedly witnessing the event. Quebec Provincial Police confirmed the death of the 51-year-old. The shooting took place about 40 kilometers southeast of Montreal, and authorities are searching for a black SUV potentially linked to the crime. Woolley was known for his ties to the Hells Angels and his leadership in the syndicate's street gang. Woolley had served time for drug trafficking and conspiracy to murder and was released on parole in November 2021. 
Police sources indicated that Woolley had been warned of threats against his life. News 3. Former First Lady Rosalind Carter, aged 96, has entered hospice care at home, joining her husband, former President Jimmy Carter, who began hospice care earlier in February. The Carter Center confirmed the news, highlighting that the couple is cherishing their time together with family. Diagnosed with dementia in May, Rosalind Carter continues to reside happily at home in Plains, Georgia, surrounded by loved ones. Her husband, Jimmy Carter, aged 99, holds the record as the oldest living American president and the longest living president in U.S. history. His presidency spanned from 1977 to 1981. The Carters, married since 1946, stand as the longest married presidential couple in American history. In a previous interview, President Carter expressed that marrying Rosalind was the most significant event of his life. The couple, known for their active public life, made a rare appearance this September at the Plains Peanut Festival. The Carter family includes four children, 12 grandchildren, and 14 great-grandchildren. Their enduring partnership and commitment to family and public service remain an inspiration to many who... News 4. Ali Garner Anderson, a 16-year-old Taylor Swift superfan, tragically passed away on November 13th after a long battle with stage 4 cancer. A highlight of Allie's journey was attending Swift's heiress tour in Cincinnati this summer, where she received Swift's 22 Outfits black hat directly from the star. This gesture brought immense joy to Allie, whose love for Swift's music had been a source of comfort since her first concert in 2015. Allie's mother, Patty Garner Anderson, fondly recalls the profound impact Swift's music had on her daughter's life. Allie even had a tattoo of Swift's lyrics as a personal inspiration. Her mother noted the poignant timing of Allie's passing, aligning with Swift's favorite number, 13. Allie died on November 13th at 1340. This special moment at the concert and the connection to Swift's music brought light into Allie's courageous fight against cancer. Number 1. Rob Belwar, A life of athletic achievement and devoted service. Rob Belwar a notable figure in both the world of sports and ministry, passed away on November 13th, leaving behind a legacy of exceptional talent and dedicated service. Born on July 13, 1948, in Heidelberg, West Germany, to Lieutenant Colonel Robert Gerald Belvoir and Lucy Jones, his life was a remarkable journey of achievements and contributions. As a Hall of Fame alumni at Mercer University, Belwar excelled in both basketball and baseball, showcasing his athletic prowess. His skills in baseball led him to be the first Mercer University alumnus to be drafted by Major League Baseball, where he played for the Cleveland Indians and the Atlanta Braves. However, his baseball career was temporarily paused when he was drafted into the United States Army, serving in the 82nd Airborne with a deployment to Vietnam. Upon his return, Belwar's path took a spiritual turn as he was called to the ministry at Southwest Christian Church in Atlanta. For over two decades, he served faithfully, touching the lives of many in his community. In 2003, Robert and his wife Fran moved to Savannah, where he continued to blend his love for sports and service as the sports information director at Savannah College of Art and Design. Robert is survived by his loving wife of 53 years, Frances Hart, his daughter Dana Michelle Brown, his son Robert Michael Belvoir, four grandsons, and his sister Michelle Thomas. His family, friends, and the communities he served will deeply miss his presence. A celebration of life service will be held later to honor this remarkable individual whose life was a blend of athletic talent and unwavering dedication to serving others. Tribute to Rob Belvoir.